Hello and welcome to our first midweek devotional of 2021. As we are here in the new year looking at what God might have in store for us in 2021, I wanted us to pause for just a few minutes to look backwards as well. I have invited Phoebe Lee, our church historian, to come here and to share with all of us some of the history of our beloved church, Ashland Place. She gave this presentation in March in the Fellowship Hall before everything shut down, and I just thought it was so interesting how she tied together the people who were involved, the places where Ashland Place has been connected, and showed us really how God has been so faithful since the very beginning of the church. And then at the end, you're going to hear a song of praise by Tiffany Norton, and it is an original song that she wrote in 1998. And she says that although her life is so different than it was in 1998 when she wrote this song, what she says about God is still true. So my hope and my prayer throughout this video as we're taking a look back as we're moving into the new year is that you will consider how God has been faithful and with you throughout your entire lives, perhaps in ways you can only see when you look back. So I hope you will feel encouraged and inspired knowing that indeed God is Emmanuel. Good morning, I'm Phoebe Lee and I've been a member of Ashland Place since 1972. One of the ways I volunteer at Ashland Place is to serve as its church historian. So this morning we're going to share some of the history of the church with you. And I certainly want to give credit where credit is due. A longtime member, Ms. Catherine Hope, wrote a history of the church in 1988. And a lot of what I'm using came from the original history that she wrote. I hope you'll enjoy this and find it very informative to know the history of Ashland Place United Methodist Church. The history of Ashland Place began in downtown Mobile at the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. It was founded in 1842, but you now know it as the steeple on St. Francis. This present building was built in 1896. In 1937, the official board, which we now call the Administrative Board, started talking about building a chapel in the western direction from downtown. The ministry of the chapel was to be an extension of St. Francis Street. Their thoughts were that because the city of Mobile was beginning its building trek westward from the downtown area, the church was becoming more and more remote from the residential region. The minister, Dr. George Stanley Fraser, and some members felt it was necessary for the church to have a chapel farther out where devotional and youth meetings could be held. For two years, discussions and planning went on and on until in March 1939, the church adopted a resolution to purchase the property at Old Shell Road and Wisteria Avenue from a Mrs. Gertrude Parker. Before the year ended, a planning and building committee was formed. The committee informed the congregation of the three purposes for the new chapel as follows. Adequate quarters for three or four children's classes in the Sunday school, especially for small children. We do not want to take away from any from our school on St. Francis Street. This is a plan for increase. Number two, a social hall where weeknight programs for young people will be held under the direction of a capable director or superintendent. Wholesome pictures will be used. And number three, Vesper services at 5.30 or 6.30 on Sunday. The Reverend Dr. Fraser had a keen interest in the design of this new chapel and said it should be built in the tradition of the English parish churches, such as Epworth. The particular design he used for Ashland Place was most like the parish church at South Lee, England. This is where John Wesley preached his first sermon. It was decided that the chapel would be built of brick rather than stone, and the committee was resolved that building would proceed only as money was available. If the money stopped, the building would stop. So the construction began and additional fill dirt would be needed for the foundation. 
It just so happened that at this time, the Bankhead Tunnel and the Admiral Sims Hotel were being built downtown. Fill dirt from those two sites were trucked out to Ashland Place. The cornerstone was finally laid December 31st, 1939. Many documents were put into the cornerstone, including a letter of congratulations from President Franklin Roosevelt. There are many furnishings and appointments within the sanctuary that were given as memorials, but I want to highlight three. These items represent a sort of recycling, just like the fill dirt from downtown was a type of recycling. First, the first organ was given by a Mr. Pape in memory of his mother. The organ was first used downtown in the Crown Theater during the days of silent movies. From there, Mr. Pape bought it to use at his radio station. Later, he donated it to the church. As a side note, the same woman who played the organ at the radio station became the first organist for Ashland Place Chapel. Her name was Mrs. Dot Kimbrough. When Ashland Place purchased our present organ in 1975, the old one was sold to Searcy Hospital Chapel in Mount Vernon. The second item to mention are the brick, the brick on the outside of the church. The pine flooring of the entire sanctuary and paneling within the chancel area are from the home of Mr. Moses Waring. He was one of the founders of the First National Bank. And the third item to mention are bricks inside the church. When the Mobile Gas Company plant was torn down, cast stone and bricks were purchased for the church. The Gothic entrances at the front door and the side door are outlined with this stone. The bricks which came out of the furnaces of the plant were used in the arched wall and chancel area of the sanctuary. Because those bricks were in the furnace of the gas company, they have more variety of color. In 1942, Ashland Place Chapel became Ashland Place Methodist Church when at annual conference, the Reverend Selman Bradley was appointed as the pastor. At that time, the church had 200 members and an annual budget of $4,624. Believe it or not, Reverend Bradley and his wife actually lived in the basement of the chapel. Unfortunately, after heavy rains, the problem of standing water presented itself. Early one morning, after a night rain, Mrs. Bradley said, I believe I hear water running. Reverend Bradley put one foot out of bed to step into ankle-deep water. Of course, repairs had to take place, but it also led to the purchase of the house beside the church at 13 Wisteria to become the parsonage. The first floor of the educational building was built in 1948. That's the floor we presently know as the nursery. The minister was the Reverend Wilbur Walton. In 1952, the second floor was built under the ministry of the Reverend Sam Jones. And in 1979, new offices, a library, workroom, basement fellowship hall, and bell tower were built. The minister was the Reverend Leo Brannan. The addition of our present two-story fellowship hall building was completed in the early 1990s. At last, we moved above ground for our many fellowship and worship activities. Our final building addition was completed in 2009 that included renovations that resulted in the landing for the young children's department, the new parlor, and a two-story wing which includes offices downstairs and the second floor for classrooms and choir suite. 
Sanctuary renovations added a choir loft and a new porch at the front door, giving safety before exiting the steps. Today, we've talked only about our building history. There's so much more, but that will be for another day. We're blessed with a wonderful legacy here at Ashland Place, and I hope this will help you think about it a little more. With your generosity, we'll continue the legacy of Ashland Place for years to come. Ever.